Welcome everyone. It's day four of the online edition of the Melbourne Food and Wine Festival. I'm Anthea lucas Bosher, and it gives me great pleasure to welcome you here to the back streets of Fitzroy to Loon Croissantry. Um, we're so excited to be here today. Loon has become one of the most celebrated food destinations in the city. Thanks to the magical work of Kate and Cam Reid and their team here who create what many would argue to be Melbourne's, if not Australia's, finest croissants. The New York Times even posed the question once as to whether Loon's croissants are in fact the best croissants in the world. So we're very lucky to be able to be going behind the scenes today on a very special tour with the lady of the house, Kate Reid, and she's going to share the secrets behind the very famous Loon croissant. So, shall we go inside and see how the magic happens? All right, let's do it. Hello. Hello. Come in. Thank you. How are you? I'm great. I wish I could give you a hug. I oh, know, I wish I could give you a hug. Welcome to Can we do a virtual hug? Virtual hug. <laughs> Welcome to Lou. So nice to see you, Kate. Thank you, you for too. having us. It smells so amazing in here. Thanks. I wish you could all smell how Scratch wonderful it is. Scratch and, yeah, yeah. scratch and sniff would be good, wouldn't it? Insta, Insta Live, scratch and sniff Insta mm. Live. Love the tea, by the way. Representing. Hi, Ben. Hi, Ben. <laughs> Still my favourite tea. It's a great tea. You can see why. So, well, you're going to take us on a very special behind the scenes look at yeah. how you make your beautiful Loon croissants. So I'm excited about I'm it. I'm excited too. Um, so, shall we kick off? Let's do it. Where should we begin? Well, I think the core ingredient of a croissant is butter. So mm -hmm. I think we should start with having a bit of a chat about butter. Let's do it. Do you want to follow me? Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Kate. Lovely. Come on through. It's all happening. Lots of busy bees. Well, it's interesting because mm. the space that we're in at the moment is not normally like this. It's mm -hmm. normally full of customers. Right. But because of COVID-19, we've of shut course. down and um, doing everything through this tiny little takeaway hatch yeah. over here, which yeah. is keeping our customers safe, our staff safe, yeah. and it means we can continue production. So yeah. it's a rare and special time to be inside Loon at the moment. Thank you. Also, we would not normally store our butter out in the customer area, but um, because of the times, we've got the fridge here at the moment. We get all of our laminating butter from France. Mm -hmm. Laminating butter is the most important type of butter that's incorporated into the croissant. Yep. Um, this one is from a small region in Normandy mm -hmm. called issigny saint mer and I actually visited them a couple of years ago to see some of their farms mm -hmm. and their production facility. When I first started Loon back in 2012, I tested about a dozen different butters mm -hmm. from all around the world, and I landed on this one, not just for the flavour, but also the working properties of the right. butter. I'm gonna talk a little bit yeah. about the flavour because a lot of people ask me why I don't use an Australian butter mm -hmm. for my laminating product. Yep. This little patch in the Normandy coastline where the butter is from mm -hmm. used to be underwater several hundred mm -hmm. years ago, and the waters receded and it just left ocean minerality in the soil right. that I haven't found anywhere else in the world. Right. So there's beautiful calcification within the yeah. butter. Also the yeah. little co-op mm -hmm. that it's made at, which is called uh, Burdissini mm -hmm. or Isini Sof Mer. It's an area that's about 40 by 20 kilometers. It's mm -hmm. tiny and mm -hmm. it's a co-op of 430 farms. And each farm only actually has about 60 cows in it. And the farms that I visited mm. have been in the family for just mm. generations mm. and their cows are their right. family. Yeah, that's And incredible. the beautiful pastures that they get right. to live in and how well they're treated, mm. I think, speaks a lot right. for the quality of the butter. So it's the terroir that makes the butter 100%. so special. Yeah. Maybe mm. the closest I've seen in Australia to that similar coastline mm. might be the northwest coastline of Tasmania. Okay. So fingers crossed the right. butter producer from there <laughs> might be able to do the same. But when right. I saw the production facility, mm. and this is a bit boring, sorry everyone, but I'm an engineer, so I'm not technical. <laughs> they actually use a process beyond normal butter production to right. make their laminating mm. without any additive. So it's mm. purely just the cultured cream mm. that makes this. They didn't actually show me this part of the factory because it's top secret, right. but they change the temperature and the speed of the churning of the butter for the laminating, and it changes the work properties of the butter mm -hmm. so it gets the water particles to be mm -hmm. super fine mm -hmm. emulsified with the fat and evenly distributed throughout mm -hmm. throughout the butter which gives it a higher working temperature mm -hmm. meaning that it doesn't melt at a low temperature which is great for maintaining integrity when we're rolling out our dough right. so I haven't found any butter in the world that right. matches this one so it's it's not only about the flavor but it's about the texture and how it how it how it 
reacts to, exactly. to um, being give baked. A little plug. Look at that. So yeah, that's beautiful. One kilo of butter. Mm -hmm. We get it delivered from France like this. We then put it through the laminator and flatten it to the exact dimensions that we need mm -hmm. and then trim it and cut it into a perfect rectangle. So exactly the same amount of butter goes mm -hmm. into each batch of pastry. And how much would you use in this fridge in a day? At the moment, we're using about 50 kilos, mm -hmm. which is probably about two and a half shelves. Right. Mm -hmm. um, that's COVID times. Mm -hmm. um, in non-COVID times, we'd be using around about 60 to 70 a day. Mm -hmm. So okay. there's been a clear drop in production, but yeah. um, we're still churning them yeah, out. So absolutely, great. Yeah. Thank so you. The that's the butter. That's the butter. And where should we head to next? I think the most natural yeah. place to go to next is the Raw Pastry okay. Kitchen, or as it's more famously known at Loon, the Cube. The Cube. So, wow. Anthea, I'm just going to get you to stand here. Yeah, sure. We're going to keep one door free. Yeah, great. So yep. the pastry chefs can come in and out. Mm -hmm. At Thank the you. moment, they're preparing the ham and cheese croissants. Um, great. So be fair to say this is the heartbeat of the operation, the cube. Literally. Like and it sits in the heart of the yeah. building. I think commonly when you look at a bakery, mm -hmm. This kitchen mm -hmm. is nestled out the back in a windowless room mm -hmm. and pastry chefs can spend up to 10 hours mm -hmm. a day in there not seeing any daylight. Mm -hmm. And when we found this space to move Loon to, Cameron and I were the two pastry chefs doing all the raw pastry work. Right. And we didn't want to be stuck in mm. a windowless kitchen out the back. So yep. one of the inspirations for the cube is we wanted to, to be, be in the heart of the people business. To see it. Yeah. And what were the considerations when it came to building this space and I guess your dream kitchen? We first of all thought about um, maybe estimating down the track what our production capacity would mm -hmm. look like. So rather than building something small, we went large mm -hmm. scale. Mm -hmm. And then the layout of everything in this room has been designed for the perfect working flow of mm -hmm. the pastry chefs in it, so that every single step they take mm -hmm. isn't wasted. It's an mm -hmm. efficient and productive mm -hmm. kitchen that allows them to do their best work. And finally, it is climate controlled. So uh, we attempt to control the temperature and the humidity as much mm -hmm. as possible. When you make croissant dough, it's pulled out of the fridge multiple times in its three day process mm -hmm. to be worked. And mm -hmm. every time it's brought into room temperature, mm -hmm. the yeast can begin to activate. Mm -hmm. So we do try to control yep. it so that we limit that yeast activation mm -hmm. until the point where it goes into the mm -hmm. prover and then the oven to have its final proven right. bake. And that we really want the yeast yeah. to have some punch then. And sorry, what temperature did you say? That we keep it at 18, 18 degrees. degrees. And is there a sequence every day of, of which croissants are made at which time in the day? Absolutely. So that we're obviously at the uh, Gruyere and ham yep. stage of the day. A favourite of many people. <laughs> so what would be the first croissant that so the, the team So the ham and cheese on? is the first, right. yep. but these guys didn't start five minutes ago. They actually okay. started five hours ago. Right. The process before the final shaping happens is called the knockback and the turn. Mm -hmm. And that's where we take the ball of dough that we made the day before that's rested overnight. Mm -hmm knock it back and laminate that French butter into it right. to create all the layers. Mm -hmm. So as you can see, mm. that uh, the batch of pastry that's been rolled out on mm -hmm. the north side of the mm -hmm. bench, that's the plain sheet of pastry that right. then gets stretched across the bench mm -hmm. to be filled with the ham, brie right. and mustard. Incredible. But um, after the ham and cheese are made, we then go into yep. a large portion of shaping of the day of just plain croissants. Right. Plain croissants aren't only sold as plain croissants at Loon, mm -hmm. they're also prepared to be made into almond right. croissants. So yes. it's the largest part of our production. Okay. And mm -hmm. then the day is finished up with all the other specials we do like pan au chocolat, quin mm -hmm. escargots, mm -hmm. danishes, things mm -hmm. like that. Okay. So, And what time do they start baking? Uh, so these guys start at 5 a.m. Mm -hmm. On a really busy day, they'll start at four mm -hmm. and they'll typically finish up between three or four o'clock right. in the okay. afternoon, depending on when yep. their shift started. Okay. So they're long days. They are long days. It's like the Croissant and Olympics in there. <laughs> yeah. it's, you've got to be physically fit to do the yeah. job. Yeah. Yeah. And how many croissants are you making a day at the moment? So uh, during COVID, mm -hmm. we've been averaging two to two and a half thousand a day. Mm -hmm. So we're sitting on about 14,000 mm -hmm. a week. But prior to COVID, we were probably making about 21,000 a week right, so okay. you can, again can see the drop right. in production cool. so amazing yeah. well it's a very impressive facility but it's also very beautiful very beautiful looking facility can yes. you tell us a little bit about how the design in particular came to be well the lights are pretty iconic mm. aren't mm. they yeah they're gorgeous and I think in many Instagram mm. photos from travelers mm. around the world we see the lights but the lights actually weren't mm -hmm. the inspiration mm -hmm. in the cube yep. I'm gonna grab off Emma thank you, thank you Emma uh -huh. um, my very good friend Susie Tuxon, who owns a friend of mine design mm -hmm. studio, who mm -hmm. did the work like 
uh, for Town Mouse, which was one of my favourite restaurants, mm. and Embler and beautiful mm. places like that. We reached out to her when we moved to Fitzroy. We wanted to rebrand, mm -hmm. to move into our, you know, in a technological new space with some fresh new branding. Mm -hmm. And the only requirement Cam and I had was that our packaging included ventilation. Right. Because every single croissant that we mm -hmm. sell is fresh from the oven and it's warm. And if yes. you put it in a sealed box, mm -hmm. then it's going to sweat and lose mm -hmm. its crunch. So this is the design that mm -hmm. Susie and her team at a friend of mine came up with. The ventilation mm -hmm. or the cuts in the mm -hmm. box are inspired by Star Wars when the spaceship goes into hyperdrive and those lines oh, yeah. of light come towards the spaceship, which we loved. Yes, that's and fantastic. It's, yeah. it's genius. And then I have to point this out, if you can just zoom in, the little rocket, but the tail of it is a croissant. Yeah. She is a genius. <laughs> love that. And it's so distinctive. It's become like such a, almost like, yeah, a design piece, hasn't it? Absolutely. Like a sort of comfortable, yeah. People, even if they are getting two or three croissants, Want they the say, box. can I please have the box? <laughs> So the day that I was talking to the electrician, um, we were standing in the cube mm. and he said, well, what do you want for the lighting? Mm -hmm. You know, maybe just some horizontal LED strips. And we just received a prototype of the box and it right. was sitting up on the bar. Oh. And I had a little bit of a thought. I'm like, hey, Ben, <laughs> is there any chance we could replicate the pattern of the box on the roof of the cube? And yes. I think it's just, it's one of the most iconic oh, things that's it's, yes. happened with this building. It's genius. And um, serendipity to have the box there at the time. I know. And I think <laughs> it's funny because the pastry chef standing in the cube, it's almost like being inside the box because if you were a croissant yeah. in the box, you'd be seeing the oh, shards yeah. of light above you. So gorgeous. Yeah. Thank you. What a great story. Great. Emma, can I have All right. to you? Thank you. Thank you so much. Any All more right. questions about the cube? No, I think it's no, I, th I think I don't think so. It looks yeah, it's such a it's such a, a lovely experience to come here and enjoy a croissant, but to see how they're made and oh, to see yeah, that's it actually, gives it, yeah it's a good point so mm. um one of the reasons that we did the cube was because we wanted our pastry chefs to be mm. able to work in amongst the action mm. but the secondary benefit that it's had yeah. is that nobody knew before this really mm. like no customer knew who, how croissants were made mm. and back in the early days i remember doing a delivery to patricia and a guy coming up to me and saying, oh, did you just get up this morning and whip up a batch of croissants? And I thought, <laughs> oh my God, he has no idea that three days have gone into this. Yes. And it's almost educational. No. Absolutely. So people can come in and watch the entire process and appreciate like the level of detail and perfection yeah. that our chefs are putting into this. So I think you definitely get a sense of, like you appreciate the final product to be able to be seen made. You can sit up at the bar, have your croissant, have a coffee. And yeah, it's great theatre as well. It is great theatre. <laughs> I actually find it quite hypnotic. Yes. Yep. Right, thank so you. So we're going to follow the okay. life span of the croissant. Great. And I'm not sure if you've spied out of the corner of your eye, but the pastry chefs have been ferrying croissant trays over to this area. So mm -hmm. we're going to ferry ourselves over to that area. <laughs> thank if you. Follow you. These imposing machines. These imposing machines. So this is the next stage of the croissant process it's the proving um, and these guys are retard approvers so um, the re retardation indicates that it can operate as a fridge and I might actually be able to show you so these are the raw ham and cheese that are going in there to be baked tomorrow so it also indicates that this morning this whole thing was full of proven croissants that have already been baked and sold right as the next stage these are ready to be baked so sometimes I think there is nothing more beautiful than the sight of an entire prover of croissants ready to bake. They are magnificent. Are they? What are you looking for? <laughs> you, you like to <laughs> what are you looking for? Okay. <laughs> so this doesn't sound very technical, it's not. But a, a correctly proven croissant for me starts to look dry on the outside and completely build its potential for, for proven puffiness. So a croissant that isn't quite ready will be a bit shiny on the surface still and will look a little bit like there's lines of cellulite. And the way I've described to my pastry chefs, imagine the body of a beach volleyballer, like not at all sinewy or cellulite, just like perfectly smooth skin. 
you're looking for the body of a beach volleyballer. Well, I will never be able to look at a croissant in the same way ever <laughs> or <a> again. Beach <laughs> or a beach volleyballer. <laughs> exactly. So they're ready to be baked. They are ready and to be baked. Is there one that we could see sort of a that's in between yeah. both? So you can see like mm. even just in the two prunes, yes. like this window is pretty dry now. Mm -hmm. This one is still very sweaty, which mm -hmm. indicates that the humidity is still very mm -hmm. high. So that's one indication that they're not quite ready to go. Right. As you can see, mm -hmm. these are quite a bit smaller. Mm -hmm. So they're also a bit more ridgy or sharp in their edges, whereas the ones before were looking a bit plumper mm -hmm. and softer. Mm -hmm. They're still wet on the surface mm -hmm. and they're starting to fill out, but I can still see subtle mm -hmm. lines of that cellulite that I described. Oh. So you can also smell that a lot more alcoholic mm -hmm. and it dies off a little bit when it's quite when it's just ready to go. So they're all the signs that we look for. Still very beautiful. Was Thank that you. a Spanagobita? Yeah, down you had that one the other day. I did, it was you? so good. It's our current savoury special that we yeah. have on the menu. So gorgeous. Yeah. Now I do have to ask you. Yes, ask away. Yuri. Yuri. Who is Yuri? Well, when we, okay, Yuri won right. was the very first of these bits of machinery mm -hmm. that Cam and I bought when we were based down at Elwood. Um, we'd realised that it's inconsequential, but that tiny creeper down the mm -hmm. end is the one that I started with. Right. And when the lines started to develop out the front of the door mm -hmm. in Elwood, we realised that we would need to um, increase our capacity. Mm -hmm. So. This guy was our first very big mm -hmm. purchase to try and increase the production mm -hmm. numbers. Mm -hmm. And the first time we loaded croissants in him as test croissants, we didn't know whether we were going to show up the next morning and they'd be beautiful like this mm -hmm. or there'd be a puddle of butter and dough. Right. And we were a bit nervous mm -hmm. about, I think we loaded 60 or 70 croissants and that was right. quite a lot at the time. Right. And Cam said, oh, I feel like they're a bit like the cosmonauts, like we're putting them in a spaceship and sending them up into space <laughs> and we don't know if they're going to live or die. And they lived. And obviously the first man to successfully fly in space was Yuri Gargarin. So Cameron said, oh, maybe go. we should nickname the Proovy Yuri. <laughs> and then we got a second one and we thought we'd be clever right. and maybe name him after the first dog in space. Right. It just didn't stick. Right. So pretty much every single prover we have at Loon is called right. Yuri in a number. It feels like it might be a good omen. Yeah. Yuri. You hope so. Yeah. Like he made it down safely, so hopefully all these guys make it down safely. You did mention earlier that you were thinking of renaming. Well, maybe that could be chapter two. Chapter two. Yeah, okay. Chapter two. <laughs> all right. How so wonderful. I think Thank um, you. the natural progression to go from mm -hmm. here is to see the croissants actually being egg washed, baked, and finished. Wonderful. Uh, so no one's actually doing that. Are you baking anything at the moment? Yeah. yeah. Do you want to? Yeah. Poor Rachel, she's probably like, <laughs> Rachel, I'm trying to get Rachel's been room. waiting. We're in her way. She's We're being annoying. Oh, this is perfect. Oh. Sorry. Right. Come over here. Thank you, you, Rachel. Think, they look gorgeous. Don't you reckon they look like they've been 3D printed? Yes, they're incredible. They're a so, beautiful thing. I didn't think, um, I mean, the finished product is a beautiful thing but they it's they're so billowy and yeah. they're so soft and they look like a little think... little cushion like I could have a little nap on there <laughs> <laughs> I actually think they're beautiful mm. in all their different yes, forms like are. when they're tiny and raw and you can yes. see every layer and then when they're yes. puffy and pillowy like this yeah. so beautiful. one of the things that I am obsessed about at mm -hmm. Loon is tray placement right and it actually takes it it seems mm -hmm. like it would be a very simple thing but it takes quite a long time mm -hmm to get used to quickly traying up the croissants right. so they're perfectly separated. Mm -hmm. And the reason that that's really important is you want mm -hmm. the same amount of space around each croissant so right. it gets an even proven bake. Okay. You can often tell at a bakery if they have no time for tray placement because their croissants will prove and bake into each other. Mm -hmm. And there are those little patches where they've touched right. where the shell isn't perfect oh, yes. on the outside. Right. And uh, yes. there's, you might notice a little rogue guy in the corner over there. Oh, okay. Pointing the wrong direction. Yes. That's intentional. All Nothing right. at Loon is an intentional. <laughs> so in the oven, the fan is quite strong. Right. And if he was spun to be in mm -hmm. the same orientation as all the other croissants, that corner of bake baking paper actually right. blows up over the nose of the yeah. croissant and affects the, the baking of that croissant as well. So and he the, kind of pins the, the paper down. Wow, that's incredible. The level of detail is astonishing. And you always glaze them the very last moment before they go in, into the into the oven. Sorry, I should say wash them with egg. 
No, that's a glaze yeah, or glaze. egg wash. Yeah, yeah, both okay. of them work. This, Absolutely. Yes. So mm -hmm. you want that glaze to still look wet and shiny when mm -hmm. it's on the outside. Mm -hmm. The earlier it's done, the egg can start to dry and look matte, and that will yep. affect that beautiful ability for like right. shiny golden croissant. Right. So yeah, they're um. As you can see, Rachel has expertly egg washed this oh, tray, I doing it like see. very quickly, but also ensuring that every no. single part of the croissant is covered. You'll also notice that she's only egg washing in a lateral direction. Yes. If you brush the croissants mm -hmm. the other way, you have the ability for the brush to pull and damage those right. layers that you've created. So there's even a technique yes. for that. And there's a wonderful little lovely story about the brush that you were telling me oh. earlier. So a beautiful thing. I reckon for the first seven years of mm -hmm. Loon, I used this manky looking brush, but for me, there was nothing better. Like it, it just got into like every little crevice and right. corner of the croissant perfectly. And I thought it couldn't be beaten. And we went and did this pop up at Singapore last year and I got there mm -hmm. and the organizers of the event had bought me a brush thinking that I might need one, although I brought my own with me. Oh, and I discovered that my brush was not the king of all oh. brushes. So we've now got a so suite a... of these. They're called the Singapore Slings. Right. And um, they're incredibly soft. They've got a really yeah. good gentle coverage. And yeah. Rach, they're pretty nice to use, aren't yeah. they? Yeah, the gold standard. Yeah, yeah they're definitely yeah. the gold standard. Oh. So unfortunately, my old brush is now brushing butter on tops of scones at home. <laughs> That's OK. Yeah. It's a nice retirement <laughs> yeah, for <agree>. old brush. <laughs> and then, And how many trays are we baking? at a time or what's the sequence of baking throughout the day? So you can see mm. here, um, this is our convection oven stack. Mm -hmm. The top oven only takes two trays and the bottom oven takes five. Rachel's loading up five because a lot of these trays she's baking will be destined for almond croissants. Right. But we typically, for the croissants that are sold fresh out the front, we mm. try and just use the two trays at the top and that's mm. because we can ensure that constantly mm -hmm. hot, fresh trays are going out the front. Um, yeah. That's one yeah. of our signatures at yes. Loon, that you can come up any time of the day. Oh, it's also and, a good point yeah. with, most bakeries mm -hmm. will only have one retard approver, mm -hmm. but at Loon, because we want to bake fresh throughout mm -hmm. the day, we mm -hmm. stagger them to be ready mm -hmm. throughout the morning. So at every time of day, we will have croissants that are ready to prove and bake to continue right. fresh croissants going out the front. So as a customer, you can rest assured that your croissant yep. is as fresh as it could possibly 100%. be. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, which is Wonderful. one reason why it's mm. nice to come down to the hatch mm. window rather than have them delivered at the moment. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Well, look at this. Oh, this is the cookie dough for the... Have you seen that one that we have on the menu at the moment? Wow, that's incredible. That yeah. is one big mixing bowl. Look, it's a decadent <laughs> croissant, let's be honest. Wow, that's incredible. <laughs> so at the moment, this is all the finishing kitchen where all right. the things like frangipans, mm -hmm. curds, custards, ganache, mm -hmm. cookie dough, yeah. everything else is made out here. It's like if that's, if the cube is the heart of Loon, mm -hmm. this is like the brain and the guts and right. everything else. So it's a very hard working wow. space out here. And there's probably more variety of work in this kitchen. Right. It's very focused in the cube. The right. Okay. So I don't Wonderful. think there's much more to see right. out here, is there? Do you want to have a wander? We'll go back into the customer yeah, space. That sounds great. Follow me. Look at this deliciousness right here. So I was just saying to Anthea before she before we started filming that I don't think I've worked full time on production in such a long time that I walk around and there is just croissants everywhere in all different parts of their lifespan. Like I don't even know what these are intended for. Like <laughs> luckily that luckily all my team have some excellent system that they know what date they're from, what they're intended for. So for lucky, some lucky customer. For some lucky customer, that's right. At some for point some, in time. For some deliciousness. So also, um, we normally run an event called the Loon Lab mm -hmm. when Loon's fully open to the public. As you can see, it's currently the manager's office. Yes. We're stationed one seat apart, right. socially distancing. Very good. Uh, but it's actually been a really nice mm. opportunity to be back in the space doing the administrative yeah. work and being so close to the production mm. so we can keep an mm. eye on it and also just um, yes. be close to the staff yeah. and make sure that they're all mm. okay. Where is your office space normally? We have actually uh, leased an office space in a co-working building, yeah. um, okay. which we call the War Room. Right, okay. Where we Wonderful. have all our exciting future plan discussions. Very good. <laughs> and for those who haven't had the pleasure and the joy of attending a Loon Lab, what happens at the Loon Lab? 
So the Loon Lab is a three course croissant degustation. We change the menu every two months to try and keep it seasonal. It starts with a croissant that's 10 minutes out of the oven, which is probably the very earliest you can eat it. It needs at least 10 minutes of time for that residual heat inside the shell to continue cooking the inner layers. So it's pretty special to get one yes. so fresh. Right. One of our chefs brings it and serves it to you. Right. You then have a savoury experimental course and a sweet experimental course mm -hmm. and all you can drink coffee and hot chocolate and you can supplement with champagne if you're celebrating. Oh, there you go. That yeah. Sounds pretty so I'm excited good. to get Loon Lab back. Yes. I think have you started thinking about when that might be able to happen? I think um, once we start the staggered mm -hmm. reopen, when mm -hmm. restrictions are eased, I think Loon Lab will be the final thing that right. we add. Okay. Oh, Anthea, I've got to show you something really exciting. Oh, yes, here. please, please. Oh, Emma, oh, look at this. oh, oh. Uh -huh. That is exciting. <laughs> Limited edition loom track suits. Merch. Um, this is merch mine. alert. Well, yeah. So Cam and I decided that rather than doing merch, we actually want to release a line of like really high quality apparel. Mm -hmm. So the branding is really subtle and simple mm. on it. And I can tell you, this is like the softest track suit I've ever oh, worn. I did, we did give it a little touchy feel oh. before, didn't we? It's very... Uh, very fleecy. I think if there yeah. was ever a time in the world to mm. just resort to wearing tracksuits mm. all the time, now is the time. Mm. Um, these are made by a beautiful local company called Australian Stitch. Um, and would work very well with your Attica t-shirt. <laughs> then maybe I'll get you a tracksuit, hey? <laughs> Swap it. <laughs> oh, so, so um, Kate, I have to say, one of the great joys of coming to Luna, aside of course from enjoying your beautiful pastries, is um, being able to experience this beautiful space mm. it's such a gorgeous building can you tell us a little bit about the history of the building yeah of course <laughs> i think the building's over 100 years old and its initial use was a foundry so um, you can see if you look up that the beams mm. are quite blackened which is i think just constant fires going on in the foundry and and the building aging as a result um, its next use was a small goods factory, mm -hmm. which I think was in sort of the, the mid 20th century. Mm -hmm. And then most recently before Loon mm -hmm. moved into it, um, mm -hmm. it was a wholesale bagel factory. But um, it was derelict for about, mm -hmm. I think about 10 years mm -hmm. before we moved in. So when we found the space, it was literally just a yeah. big open empty shed right. with oh, lots of potential. Lovely. You must love coming here. It's pretty special. Yeah. I Every think day. for, for a space that we fitted mm. out five years ago, mm. I don't feel like it's dated at no, all. No, it's timeless. And we're constantly mm. making small improvements mm -hmm. and upgrades to it, but um, in essence, it's not based on like a mm. style or an era. Right. It's literally just, it was designed for functionality. Mm. Um, as I said, the perfect space in which to make croissants, but as yes. such, I think we've ended up with beautiful form. Mm. And um, it has actually won architectural awards as well. Yeah, I'm not surprised to hear yeah. that, not, not in the least. Mm. Um, I have to ask you, why croissants? How did why, why did why did you choose the croissant? How, how why did the croissant choose you? Perhaps the croissant maybe did choose me. <laughs> I think um, I'll go back a little bit yes. into my history. Mm. I'm actually an aerospace engineer, and my passion was Formula One. Um, I was an aerodynamicist for the Williams F1 team, so I really love deeply mm -hmm. uh, sorry deeply technical mm. uh, perfectionist nature and of being able to apply that to something. Mm -hmm. um, when I stopped working in Formula One, um, I knew that I had a bent towards baking mm -hmm. and I started to dip my toe in the water and actually ended up working at this beautiful cafe owned by a Greek couple over in Hartwell. Mm -hmm. And she allowed me to do her baking for her every day. So every morning I'd go in for four mm -hmm. hours and make muffins and cakes and mm -hmm. tarts and things like mm -hmm. that and thoroughly enjoyed mm. it. But um, as, as I got more into my mm. baking, I started to crave more technical mm -hmm. application of the skill right. and developed a bit of an interest in French pastry mm -hmm. because it is so technical and so right. steeped in tradition. Mm -hmm. I ended up going over to France mm -hmm. with the couple that owned the cafe I worked at and um, going into a boulangerie in the 10th arrondissement mm -hmm. called mm -hmm. Dupin de Desidé mm -hmm. and just being inspired mm. by their entire range of patisserie. Right and um, asked the owner if mm -hmm. he would consider taking me as an apprentice mm -hmm. and I was lucky enough that he did. Mm -hmm. And my time in Paris was where I truly found my right. passion for baking mm -hmm. and discovered this product that mm. was so deeply technical right. and required not just the mind of like a chef or a creator mm -hmm. but also a, almost an engineering technical precision mm -hmm. and I thought wow this is 
all of my loves combined into one. Together. So yeah, the croissant and I found each yeah. other. And how long ago was that, that time in Paris? I was in Paris in 2010, so okay. a decade ago. A decade ago. <laughs> yeah, wow. And I do think we have to say happy birthday for Monday. Yes, it's my so eighth year anniversary. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, Happy birthday, right. Loon, on you. Monday. Yeah, we'll have to go out. Loon and I will go out and have a drink together. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, but yes, we'll have to celebrate on Monday. And oh, yeah. Yes. So, why... Well, thank you for opening the restaurants, um, Daniel Andrews. Yes, on Monday, for, your, for the Loon birthday, <laughs> absolutely. And what is it that you love about your everyday at Loon? What I love about... Do you know what? It's... When I was working mm -hmm. here every day in production, mm -hmm. you don't get the opportunity to mm -hmm. smell the croissants because you're already working mm -hmm. in it by the mm -hmm. time they start baking. Mm -hmm. And it's a smell that just becomes synonymous with work and mm -hmm. you almost don't notice it. Mm -hmm. But um, ever since my team has grown and we've got mm -hmm. amazing chefs now doing the majority of the production, mm -hmm. I actually just love approaching work every day. Yes. And from a le at least a block away, mm -hmm. I can smell the mm -hmm. croissants. And I'm like, oh, that's my place. Mm -hmm. And it's pretty special. Yeah. Like. Like the lucky okay. neighbours. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Imagine living near here and, and it's hungry like all day. All <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's lovely. And you have met, I mean, you, Loon is an absolute juggernaut and you have fans not only, you know, all around Melbourne, all around Australia, but all around the world. Yeah. Um, and at the moment, you all of your um, stores are in Melbourne. Have you thought about expanding? Oh, there was talk about you expanding into other cities and then COVID happened. Are, yep. Do you still have plans to oh, open interstate? Nothing has changed, um, luckily. Uh, so we are opening a store in Sydney. We announced that before COVID hit and all the restrictions and still very much on the cards. Luckily for us, the time frame was quite a long way out. Mm. So we're still yep. totally working on Great. our city, si Wonderful. our Sydney opening. Right. It's probably about 12 to 18 months away. It's an right. enormous project and we're incredibly okay. excited about right. it. I know we've got a lot of fans up in Sydney who yes. I think will be thrilled to hear that it's still on yes. the cards. The croissant lovers of Sydney say thank you. We're excited. <laughs> now, when you're not eating croissants, you are a, a food lover. Yes, And you, you do love spending time in restaurants. Where do you like to spend your time eating? Well, we can talk pretty locally. How yeah. good is Napier Quarter? Oh, Nap I love oh. Napier Quarter. So yeah, their wonderful. little shift for COVID, mm. they've opened as a paninoteca. And mm. I just even love saying yeah. paninoteca. <laughs> Absolutely. But num I believe it's number four uh, on the menu. Right. The suppressor panino is uh, crack. Okay, you know what? I'm going there straight after here. I might, I might be following <laughs> We'll go together. <laughs> it normally is lunch every day right. at the moment, but right. when Napier Court is in its normal everyday yeah. state, it's just, it feels like a little pocket of Europe yeah. in our neighbourhood. And mm. to walk in there and get the beautiful service mm. from Dan and Simon and their staff and yes. just such a focus on simple, mm. high-quality mm. produce, mm. beautiful wines. I could yeah. easily while away an entire night there. Yeah. Yeah. So that's one of my favourites, but I'm also a massive fan of all of Andrew McConnell's venues. Marion's another beautiful local, which uh, mm. when they were still open for breakfast, mm -hmm. my dog and I would walk there mm. every Saturday and Sunday, but now it's just a tipple in the afternoon or yes. evening. Yes. And um, Cumulus and Supernormal mm. are brilliant. Oh, yeah. and my most recent new favourite is Distazio Chitta. Uh, of course. So sitting up at the bar with like a Negroni yeah. and a bowl of the Linguini Capri is yeah. a pretty happy night. And, oh, wonderful. So we're very lucky. We're mm. lucky to live in this city. Mm. Now, you're wearing the wonderful Attica t-shirt there. So one of the, if there, are, there have been some silver linings of COVID-19, and one mm. of those silver linings was the creation of Dave. Dave, indeed. The wonderful... Fancy Dave. Wonderful <laughs> Dave. The, the collaboration that you have um, worked on with Ben Shuri mm. at Attica. Can you tell us a little bit about Dave? Yeah, sure. Mm. So Ben and I have wanted to do a collaboration for years. And I think we've both just been so busy focusing mm. on our own businesses that mm -hmm. the time's never been mm -hmm. right. And I find it ironic and wonderful that the time was right during a pandemic. But mm. um, Ben, <coughs> we both spoke to each other in the very early days when restrictions were announced. And I think we were two of the very early people to act on new models and changes, mm. both like, first of all, for me, mm. We are so lucky as Melburnians to have Ben Shuri mm. in our city. He is an inspiration and one of the most tireless, hardworking mm. people I know in this industry. And um, on, on top of that also just incredibly innovative and mm. 
very committed to his cause. Um, and I think we both share an alignment with that about how passionate we are about what we do. We reached out to each other in the early days of COVID mm. and spoke about how we could support each other first. And I think it was um, it was a real sign of the mm. industry how we did quite, like we pulled together. Mm. And um, so Ben and I spoke about how we could support each other right. and he opened the bake shop yes. early on, but then um, left that behind to mm. focus on the Attica take home. Mm -hmm. And he then approached me and said, look, I'd love to do something with Loom Pastry. I feel like now might be the time. Mm. And it seems like a strange time, but I actually think it's been perfect because mm -hmm. in this time of difficult challenges and, and it's been quite confusing for everybody, like mm. we've lost all these things that we used to look forward to in life, to have some amazing new creation that's yes. possible to try between two people who have worked mm. together to bring their mm. unique skill mm -hmm. um, and to be able to have it at home, yeah. which it's is incredible. pretty wild. But I think yeah. even more than that, like obviously Ben can only make a certain mm. amount of Daves per day. Yes. They're incredibly so technical six, to make. Six I think. a day? And I think Ben might be the only one that knows how to do it. Right. So okay. he's really hamstrung right. himself with Dave. Right. So if you're out there and you're getting Dave, that is yeah. totally made by, first of all, the Loom right. Pastry Chefs yeah. and then the very hands of Ben Shuri, right. which is pretty exciting. And but, so um, it's a pastry with native fruits. And yep. custard, I believe right? it's got yeah. bush apple yeah. through right. it apple. and native mm -hmm. spices yeah. and then it's glazed with finger lime jam mm. and glace native fruits and then I'm sure you've all seen that yes. decadent video <laughs> of the, the cream and the custard. Yeah, wonderful. But um, I think oh. more than that, Ben just wanted to bring a bit of happiness and lightness mm. to everyone and had this amazing idea to do that hilarious croissant thief video. Yeah, it was and it even, really fun. It just brought yeah. a smile to me yeah. and all my team yeah. on the days that we filmed that. Yeah. He's an incredibly clever guy. Yeah. So, Special and a person. good friend. Thanks, Ben. <laughs> yeah. all, this, oh, all this talk of pastry has me hungry. A little bit hungry? Hungry for a croissant. Oh, you can't is have it, one. Is it? Oh. <laughs> we <laughs> haven't got it. Could any. it be that time? <laughs> no. Shall we? Yeah, let's do Come it. Over Thank with you. <laughs> See, I told you I'm a chatterbox. <laughs> Dave, yes. How do you feel oh. about a good old traditional croissant? Let's, oh, that would be wonderful. I wonderful, think when okay. you come to yeah. Loon, yes. like it's like going to a cafe and ordering poached mm. eggs. Go right. for the simple, see how they do yep. it, and then judge. That sounds great. Now, we, one thing we haven't talked about is what makes a great croissant? It's an interesting question, mm. and I've been thinking yeah. about that, because mm. like everything with food, mm. it's all subjective, and mm. it's maybe your flavour is different to what my flavour is, but... <laughs> The loon croissant is based on what I like in a croissant. So what I like, first of all, it must taste of the butter. And mm -hmm. it, like we're going back to the start of our conversation, mm -hmm. I selected the butter specifically, not just for its working properties, mm -hmm. but also mm -hmm. that incredibly unique and irreplicable mm -hmm. taste from the Normandy coast. And I think that the loon croissant is truly a celebration of that mm -hmm. little pocket of the French coastline. Yeah. Um, so first of all, your first bite, it should smell of butter. You should have butter on your palate. Um, it shouldn't be greasy. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things that is a closely held secret at Loon, how we prove and bake our croissants mm. actually locks the butter in. Right. So you get maximum butter flavour, but none of the greasy mm -hmm. mouthfeel. Mm -hmm. um, our croissants are actually 43% butter. Right. And a normal croissant is 25 to 30. Okay. So we really pack it in there. Yeah. <laughs> and then on the eating experience, I really want like a beautiful almost perfect crust on the outside that's mm. golden and it cracks when you bite into it mm -hmm. and you get beautiful big flakes of pastry falling onto mm -hmm. the plate. Mm -hmm. But when you get to the inner layers, if you're mm -hmm. eating it fresh, mm -hmm. it should be soft and springy mm -hmm. and fluffy and okay. still a touch warm. Right. Okay. So for me, that's a perfect croissant. That sounds pretty perfect to me. And how does one perfectly eat a croissant? What is the Kate Reid yeah. method well, of again, eating a I croissant? I think everyone has their own <laughs> yeah. way yeah. and I try not to judge yeah. people, but. I would not use any cutlery for right. me. Like, I just pick it up. Actually, shall I demonstrate? Yeah, let's. Yes, please. I'll get you one first, Anthea, because you're. Okay, favorite. thank you. Yes. You've got a job at Loon. Feel the warmth of that tray. That's the serving oh, temperature. Wow, that's so incredible. So the tray is warm, but you can touch it with your bare hands. Mm -hmm. and from, like, that's it's, how you'd know. It's, obviously mm. everyone has a different mm. threshold, mm. but for me, that's the perfect temperature. Right. So, 
Thank you. Before oh. you eat, I'm going to talk you through the anatomy of the croissant. Yes. You know me banging on about my anatomy of the croissant, Jerry. <laughs> Look how glossy she is. Oh, she? Is it, was it a he? They're I don't know. He's. They're all he. They're Seriously. all he. Seriously. Yeah. Oh, How did I not know been, that? They've been the bad boys. Oh, the bad boys. So, okay. we've got the ears. The ears are actually my favourite part. Mm -hmm. We've got the bum yep. and the nose. And the least favourite part for me is the top layer of the nose. And the reason being, yep. I feel like it's got the least butter flavour. The third layer down of the nose is my favourite layer of the entire right. croissant because it's still crunchy, mm -hmm. but it's if you look at it really closely, it looks a bit like almost pork crackling, like you mm -hmm. have these micro bubbles mm -hmm. and you get a real punch of butter mm -hmm. flavour. So I start by eating an ear mm -hmm. and then I pull the layers of the nose oh, apart the... and then I make my way from left That's to right. right. Okay. Yeah. Well, before we do that, I just need to take a moment of thanks First, I would like to thank you, Kate, for having oh, us here pleasure. today. It was, it's been such a wonderful experience oh, to see the you. inner workings of Loon. Yeah. Um, so thank you very much. Thank you to everyone who's joined us. I'd also like to say thank you to our principal partner, Bank of Melbourne, and our destination partner, Visit Victoria. Thank you both for your ongoing support of the Melbourne Food and Wine Festival. We're day four of the online edition today. There's loads of great action happening throughout the day, some superstar talent, including up next wonderful Dan Hunter at Bray, there's Shannon Martinez, there's Sundowners by Starwood. Go to mfwf.com.au to check out all the sessions and the times. And we hope to see you online a little bit later today. Thank you very much. Shall we? Yeah, okay. I want to eat it so I can go right. and listen to Dan Hunter. Oh yes, absolutely. <laughs> Another all right. Dan. Oh cool. All right. All right, this could get messy. All me? right, you show, you show me. Well, we're going to go for the ear first. Okay, we're going for the ear. All right. Oh, you've already lost your nose. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's do it. Mm. Uh, can vouch, delicious and warm. <laughs> Thank you. That's Thank great. you.